Hey team, Sid here with DevOps Directive, and today I'm talking about Docker, specifically how to build container images that can be deployed across multiple processor architectures. This is becoming increasingly important as ARM processors make their way into both developer systems as well as cloud-based servers. Historically, most development systems have run CPUs from Intel and AMD using the x86 or AMD architecture. Over on the server side, those software are usually deployed onto systems running different chips from those companies, but with the same architectures. Because these systems are using the same architecture, building and running Docker containers just works across them. Nothing special is required. However, in the past few years, there's been a rise in a competing architecture known as ARM. Systems like Raspberry Pis, and more recently, the Apple Silicon Macs becoming more prominent. ARM processors are also starting to pop up on the deployment side of things with containers being run on embedded systems, and AWS releasing their custom Graviton chips using ARM in their A1 series virtual machines. Like the x86 architecture above, if you're building and running containers on similar architectures, it should just work. But what about these other use cases? Can I build a container image on my Intel-based laptop and then run it on an ARM server in AWS? It turns out you can, and in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. At this point, you may be thinking, okay, that sounds nice, but who really cares? There's two relatively recent developments that are making this a unique time in history for ARM-based processors. First is the transition of Apple Macs onto the new Apple Silicon chips. This change will mean the percentage of engineers developing on ARM-based systems will increase dramatically in the coming years. The second is the release and the maturation of ARM-based virtual machines in AWS. I suspect that other cloud providers will soon follow suit and start offering competing ARM-based servers. So, I hinted at the fact that we can handle cross-architecture builds with Docker, but how does this actually work? The first topic to explore is multi-architecture manifests. If we run the docker manifest inspect command on a popular base image such as the official Node.js image, we see that the manifest printed to the terminal in JSON actually contains three separate manifests within the array each with a different architecture, one for AMD64, one for ARM32, and a third for ARM64. Within the Docker Hub interface, these different architectures show up as separate digests highlighted here within the GUI. Most official Docker images these days support multiple architectures in this way. For example, of the 166 official images, those published by the Docker organization, 118 of them support both x86-64 and ARM64. There's two ways that this type of images can be built. The older method of creating multiple architecture images is a bit labor intensive. First, you had to have systems natively running each architecture you wanted to target. So you might have a build farm with one Intel based system, one 64 bit ARM machine, and a third 32 bit ARM machine. You then run your build command on each of them using separate Docker files to handle any discrepancies between the two architectures. Once they're built, you can create a combined manifest using the manifest create command. This manifest then gets pushed to the Docker registry alongside the images. This method works fine, but it can be a bit clunky. In 2019, Docker announced a new method for building multi-architecture images, which they call build X. Depending which version of Docker you're using, this may or may not be an experimental feature. That being said, it's built on top of BuildKit, which has been around for quite some time and is fairly stable. Build X does a number of cool things related to multi-architecture images. First of which is being able to take a set of systems natively running our, each of the target architectures like before and turn them into a true build farm, building images in parallel with Build X managing the process. The second method of using Build X is using a single node along with QEMU or Kimu, an open source machine emulator that allows you to emulate one processor architecture on another. This is super cool because now as a developer, I can have a single system running either x86 or ARM and build Docker images compatible with both. This is going to be the use case that I focus on for the remainder of the video. I'm currently working on a 2018 MacBook Pro with an Intel based processor. I'm going to walk through the process of using BuildX to build a simple node application container image and then run it as a container on both x86 and ARM servers within AWS. Here's the simple server course code. Using the built-in HTTP module, when a request is made to the server, it just responds with a hello world message, but also includes the process.arch variable 
which will tell us which processor architecture is being used. To containerize the app, we start from the node base image, which I pointed out earlier supports multiple architectures, and then we set the working directory to a standard convention of user source app. Next, we copy in our package.json and install the dependencies. Our application actually doesn't have any dependencies, but I included this step since almost any node application will. Not every dependency will work out of the box across architectures, so you may need to do some experimentation here to get things working. Next, we copy in our source code and finally execute our server.js file to start the server. Okay, with the source defined, now we can go through the process of actually using BuildX to build the images. First, we want to authenticate to the Docker registry using Docker login. I'm using Docker Hub here as the remote registry, but most registries should support multi architecture images in this way. Next, I'll run the docker buildx ls command. This will show the available builders. If you've never used buildx before, you should see a single builder return named default. While we could use this default builder, it's recommended to create a new builder using the docker buildx create and then passing the name of the new builder. This builder provides a scoped environment for our builds, and so if we make a mistake configuring it, we can always wipe it out and create a new one without affecting the default settings. We now need to tell Docker to use this new builder with the buildx use command. Finally, we want to inspect our builder to make sure it's configured correctly. The dash dash bootstrap flag ensures that the driver is running before we inspect it. This final step isn't strictly necessary because Docker would automatically bootstrap the build when building our images, but it's useful to confirm that our configuration matches the expectation. The next step is to create a new repository within Docker Hub. I'd already created a repo here named multi arch test, which I'll use for this demo. With everything configured, we can now build the images. To anyone who's used Docker before, the build command will look familiar. Use docker build x build, and then the dash t flag allows us to tag the image. There's two new options I used here specific to build x. The platform option allows us to specify which architectures we want to build the images for and the push flag will automatically push the image and the manifest to our remote registry. When we execute this command, the terminal is flooded with text showing us all the steps that Docker is executing. I'll point out here that the prefix on each line shows the different architectures and how BuildX is managing and building those in parallel. Once the process completes, we can visit the image within Docker Hub and see that it now shows support for multiple architectures. How do we actually go about running these images? When running a container, Docker is smart enough to auto-detect the architecture of the host system and use the corresponding image. So when I run this test container on my Intel-based processor, it will automatically grab the AMD64 image. For on one of the new M1 MacBooks, it would instead pull and use the ARM64 image. I'll point out now that to use Docker Desktop on the Apple M1 Macs currently requires using a preview build, but that should change in the coming months. I can override the default behavior by referencing the full image digest hash when issuing the docker run command. Here, I pass the digest reference for the ARM image while on my x86 machine. It executes using QEMU in the background, but it does issue this warning that the two architectures don't match. Also, I brought this up earlier, but why would you actually care about any of this? If we deploy onto a general purpose M5 series virtual machine in AWS, the application works just fine. Likewise, if we deploy onto an A1 instance running an ARM processor, it also works just fine. The key difference here is that because these A1 instances are more power efficient, AWS charges significantly less. They cite a 20% cost reduction and up to 40% performance increase for similarly spec systems. Given how significant compute costs can be for companies building web applications, these savings can be massive. I would encourage you to try to build your applications in a multi-architecture fashion so that if you want to capitalize on these savings, you can. That being said, BuildX is not magic. While many Docker files will just work if you use multi-stage Docker files with officially supported base images, there are some cases where you can run into issues. First, not every base image supports multi -ar multiple architectures. The situation continues to improve as adoption spreads, but it's not perfect. Similarly, not every dependency will be built for every architecture you're targeting. If they haven't been, you may need to build them yourselves. There's also some scenarios where you need to handle application behavior differently between different architectures, and therefore will need separate Docker files. 
If this is the case, you'll need to bypass build X and use the older method of manually combining separate manifests. Hopefully this video has left you excited about the opportunity to take advantage of multiple architecture Docker images and potentially save some cash by deploying onto ARM-based servers. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. If you want to continue down the DevOps rabbit hole, consider checking out one of my other videos over there and subscribing to my channel so you don't miss out on future content. That's it for today, and remember, just keep building.